Hello, my name is Gayla Fesher and I'm Technical Director at RDP Technologies. Today I will be highlighting the key components all operators, owners and engineers should know about lime slaking. After a brief summary of key reaction elements, I will demonstrate the importance of using precision in controlling these elements with optimized procedures and correct equipment. I will then demonstrate the lime slaking reaction where just one of these elements is not controlled. Lime slaking is the reaction of quick lime or calcium oxide with water to produce hydrated lime or calcium hydroxide. Calcium oxide can take many forms. For the demonstration today, we're going to be using pebble quicklime. So what are the characteristics of an optimized lime slurry? If optimized, complete hydration occurs. The lime slurry will have fine particles such that at a minimum, it is visually uniform. This is indicative of a high surface area, high porosity, slower settling rates of solution, and ultimately high chemical reactivity that will be important to your final process. It should be noted that the characteristics of the final hydrated lime slurry are somewhat dependent on initial quick lime characteristics. The lime slaking reaction is highly exothermic. As you add the calcium oxide to the water, you produce a lot of heat causing a dramatic increase in temperature. Controlling this temperature variation is one of the key elements to optimizing the slaking reaction. If the solution gets too hot, too much of the water added can be lost to steam and the quicklime particles can burn or become dehydrated. This can also cause significant safety hazards to equipment and operators. If the reaction is stopped at too cold a temperature, Water doesn't have the time or conditions to penetrate the center of the quicklime particle and hydration is not complete. This is called drowning and it is sometimes initiated in poorly controlled reactions for fear of higher temperatures. Both burning and drowning result in a coarse particle, low reactivity, ineffective lime slurry. And following our precision demonstration today, it will be the drowning concept that we will demonstrate here today. Before we start the demonstration, there are several other reaction elements that I would like to point out. The level of agitation is designed to eliminate localized dead spots of hard burned lime that can reach temperatures in excess of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The dimensions of your reactor equipment must include baffling and mixing designed to minimize air entrainment water temperature, the rate at which you add quick lime and water, the amount of time allowed for the reaction to occur and for aging, and the optimum initial ratio of water to lime are also considerations. The key is determining the sweet spot for all these reaction elements. So, initial water ratios can range from 2.9 to 6 pounds of water to 1 pound of lime. For our precision demonstration and for our drowning demonstration today, we will be using water to lime ratio of approximately 3.3 to 1. For one pound of quick lime, we will be using 3.3 pounds or 1500 milliliters of initial mixing water. The temperature of our initial water is 79 degrees, room temperature in here today. The initial water in the lime slaker must be enough to cover the specially designed agitator and the temperature probe. As we start to add the lime, we'll do so slowly. In full-scale processes, lime addition may take up to four minutes per batch. Adding the lime too fast could simulate flooding or uncontrolled lime feed, which results in non-uniform slurry and could result in safety hazards. As you can see, the reaction temperature starts to increase quite quickly. As the reaction continues, 
you can see that the slurry is uniform and you don't see residual large particles around the base of the beaker. The temperature values start to taper off at 185 degrees and then slowly reduce from the maximum. This smooth temperature profile shows that the lime has been allowed to fully react with the water. There is little or no reactive residual lime remaining and an optimized lime slurry has been produced. If the reaction is prematurely halted, spikes can be noted in the temperature profile after the maximum has been achieved. This is indicative of actual pebbles of lime still existing inside the reactor vessel that remain unhydrated by the addition of makeup water too soon. As the slurry temperature starts to reduce, this indicates an exothermic reaction is no longer occurring, and we can now add the dilution water to make our final slurry. A lime to water ratio of 3.3 to 1, like we started with, yields a 30% slurry. We will be adding 3,000 milliliters or 6.6 .6 pounds of water to make a 10% final slurry. The temperature of this makeup water is also approximately 79 degrees. Again, water should be added slowly and uniformly at every stage of this reaction. Dumping the makeup water in could have similar repercussions to the drowning effect. At a 10% slurry, it is visually uniform. You don't see any large particles. Particle size distribution tests would likely show a fine particle size, resulting in a highly chemically reactive, highly efficient and used process. I have now given you a brief explanation of key lime slaking elements and demonstrated the importance of precision when it comes to control of the lime slaking reaction and the equipment and procedures used to do so. I now want to provide a demonstration of what happens if you change just one of those components. As I said earlier, drowning is when the lime slaking reaction is stunted prior to reaching its optimum temperature. For this demonstration, we will be using the same vessel design and level of agitation the same mixing water temperatures, the same water to lime ratio, and the same rates of addition. The only change will be to the reaction temperature. This time, we are only going to allow the reaction to proceed to 150 degrees. Similar to the previous demo, we add our 1500 milliliters of water, or 3.3 pounds of mixing water. Similar to the previous demo, we will add our 1500 milliliters or 3.3 pounds of initial mixing water. The mixer and probe are covered. We start the mixer and we slowly add one pound of quicklime, initiating the slaking reaction. As the reaction between the lime and water starts to occur, the reaction temperature increases and we are making a 30% calcium hydroxide slurry. However, this time, when 150 degrees is reached, we kill the reaction. As you can see from the contents of the beaker, you can see the particles of lime that have not reacted. This will result in a lower reactivity lime slurry that is potentially unstable and a much lower efficiency of your process overall. In order to quantify the solids remaining out of solution, we will pass this slurry through a size number 70 sieve. 
Solids remaining in this beaker are predominantly grit and unavailable lime. You can see by inspection the large quantity of unreacted lime solids remaining at the bottom of this beaker. Drowning is one of the many procedures that can have negative impacts on your slurry production. As we've shown here today, Drowning the slurry kills the reaction prior to its optimum temperature, which cuts short not only the reaction temperature, but the reaction time. The slaking process is halted prior to the conversion of all calcium oxide, and this results in a non-uniform, large particle, unreactive lime slurry that will increase control, maintenance, and operational efficiency challenges in your plant. I hope you found this demonstration informative. If you have any questions, please contact us at RDP Technologies. Thank you very much and have a great day.